My name is Kalish Metellus. I'm a gay black man, and I'm the president of the Student Government Association. So I've had two coming out experiences. I was born in Brooklyn, New York, but I was raised down south in North Carolina. Um, and I knew I was different from my peers growing up, but I was scared to act on it or speak to my family about it because my family was heavily religious and I was very scared to come out to my parents. Um, I knew that I liked boys and I didn't know how to express myself because I know what gay people in general were going through in those times. So one day I gained the confidence to come and tell my mom and you know because she's religious and you know the church preaches upon that and how you know it's against the Bible, it's against Christ and all that, she beat me because she didn't know what else to do at the time. So that left me traumatized, it left me alone because I felt like I was different in the world, different from everybody else. So I was petrified, so I grew up, um, I had to hide who I was, I had to pretend like I was somebody else growing up. I went to church, I prayed about it, I used to pray every night that God would take this away from me because I thought it was the wrong thing and I didn't want to go to hell. No person that I know would want to go to hell and I damn for sure don't want to go to hell. So years passed by, I moved to New York, I moved to Brooklyn and um, I started going to church and one day, I was 13, 13 when I moved to New York and I confided in a pastor that I was gay and I didn't know what to do. I was very scared because I didn't know what would happen to me. So I had confided in a pastor and I told him that I was gay and I needed help because my prayers weren't being answered and the pastor said that he would help me. And eventually he took advantage of me and that, that um, it isolated me a lot more because you know, I had told my mother I was gay at five years old and she beat me. So how am I gonna come and tell my mother that I just got raped by a pastor? Like, what would she do? What would she say? So I kept that in. I held it in. I thought he was going to help me um, with my sexuality to become a straight man because I didn't ask to be gay. So time passed along, 16 years old. I just got tired of being someone that I'm not. I was tired of everything. I was just tired and I was just like, you know what? I only have one life to live and I'm gonna live it how I want to. So at 16 years old, I came out the closet as a gay black male, and here I am today. How I came adversity growing up is black woman. There was always a black woman that molded me, mentored me, pushed me to be the best that I can be. Like literally pushed me out of my shell because I was a very closed child, very introverted. I didn't really speak and black women have always been there for me. Without black women, I don't know where I would be today. They are literally the strongest group of people that I know, and without them, I don't know where I would be. I never really had a male presence in my life growing up. Black women were the ones that nurtured me and pushed me to be myself and to not be apologetic for being myself and to strive and to set goals and to accomplish those goals and to not let anyone tear my goals down or project their fears onto anything that I want to do or how I want to live my life. So black women did it for me. As a child, I was on honor roll, I was on principal's list, I got nominated for awards, I played baseball, I won games, I was a good child, and I never really got the acknowledgement from my family or support. People in the community have showed me way more support, way more nurturement, way more love than my actual family has. Everywhere I went, there was always that one person there to support me, nurture me, help me, and push me to excel by any means necessary. I would like to thank everyone who voted for me. Um, I would also like to take a moment of silence for my counselor, my high school counselor that died of cancer that helped me get through high school. So can we take a moment of silence for my counselor, please? The second challenge I would say that um, I have is something more current, you know, it's opportunities. You know, I'm a politics, economics, and law major. I do want to get into the legal field, become an attorney, and represent the underrepresented. Um, I do want to do like a lot of extracurricular activities and certain things, but you know, there's limits and you have to look a certain way. So I feel like being that I am out and I'm openly gay and unapologetic, I feel like I miss out on opportunities because of my sexuality at times. Because you know, of, you know, we have came far, we, we come far, but you know, there's still some limitations and there's still some stereotypical things going on in society today, 
even though it was way better than it was in the early 2000s, they still exist. So I feel like that prevents me, me being out and openly gay, prevents me from partaking in certain activities, certain goals, and certain um, fields that I want to be in when I get older. One of my, I would say my greatest accomplishments would be graduating high school. Um, like around the time I came out of the closet, like I wasn't really focused on school. I was more so focused on finding myself and finding who I am, you know, because I had to hide it for so long. So I spent that time and I wasn't really focused in school. So I had left school for probably like six months in um, my prior school, which I went to high school for Brooklyn Leadership and Community Services. It's a transitional high school to push people who have trouble graduating with school or trouble finishing classes and stuff to graduate. So I had a counselor there who pushed me. She actually, you know, got on my ass and told me that you need to graduate. Education is the key to success and you need to get a quality education so you can make something of yourself. So one of my accomplishments were graduating high school. So another accomplishment I could say that is dear to me is I'm a business owner, I'm an entrepreneur. Um, my business is called the College Montellus Collection LLC. I'm a limited liability corporation. I sell hair extensions, I sell custom units, I sell um, natural hair products. Um, my business is catered to black women, um, but it's open to in anyone of any race, any background. And um, I take pleasure of making black women feel great about themselves, feel confident, and what black women gave to me, I can now give back to them. A major, major accomplishment is me being the SGA president. I didn't have any experience at all. Robbers rules, meetings, all that stuff. I had no experience compared to my competitors that I was running against. And I was the only gay person running for SGA president. And I was coming out of nowhere, like nobody really knew me like that. So when I won, I was, I was, I don't know, I don't even know how to explain it. I was just so excited that people believed in me to take on a role to represent them. So that was great. So I am the SGA president. I say that with confidence. I'm great, I'm effective. I'm um, goal-oriented, I get things done, and um, I feel like I'm well, I am, well respected by faculty, the student body, alumni, and I am a force to be reckoned with. And it all comes back to me growing up, how I always had that person to push me to, push me to fight for myself and to, you know, go for what I want. And it's like now I'm in a position to where I'm pushing everyone else to speak up for themselves because we all pay to go here and your concerns should be answered and things that you want done to better campus life should happen. So it's ironic that I had that growing up and now I'm in a seat where I'm pushing for students to do exactly what I was told to do growing up. I want to give back to the less fortunate. That is my, that is something that I feel great about giving back because it was given to me at a young age. So when it comes to economically disadvantaged people, people who are trying to excel but don't have the services, I want to be able to give back to them any way that I can. So ultimately when I do graduate from Old Westbury and I do become successful because I will become successful. I do plan on initiating scholarships for the less fortunate, the students of academic excellence. I do plan on giving back to Old Westbury however I can and providing services because Old Westbury has given a lot to me and has pushed me to be a better student leader, to be a better person, to be myself and to excel. So I have to give back. It's, I feel in depth to give back. I have to. I feel like I owe it. So I'm going to give back.